I have four nine inch square pieces of paper here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just tack them together in the back so that they don't come apart. And really kind of creating this, uh, it, in the end, if I flip it over, it's gonna feel a little bit just like one big square. So I'm gonna do that first. I'm gonna tape these in the back. And I'm just using some white artist tape to do that. And I'm gonna tape it together. <clears throat> then I'm gonna flip it. And then I'm going to start a series of drawings that um, I'm going to draw and then obliterate and then draw and then obliterate. It's really an amazing way to start to um, create abstraction and start to create a looser uh, way of working. What I am gonna use is this big chunk of compressed charcoal. I'm using these objects here, which are um, a cowbell from Thailand, a, um, a claw of a crab, and a little uh, plastic kangaroo. So I'm going to also be using my non-dominant hand, meaning my, I'm, I'm a right-handed person, I'm gonna be using my left hand to draw. Using a non-dominant hand is also gonna kind of get in your way and help you sort of destabilize what you normally do, and in destabilizing it, it actually liberates you. So I'm going to start by just making, and I'm going to, even though this is four separate little sheets, now that they're joined, I'm going to just pretend it's one piece of paper. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start creating a contour drawing. You know, um, I'm not going to get really caught up in all the little details of this kangaroo where I'm starting here, but I'm going to just make a little loose contour drawing you can really draw these objects any way you want to, but I, I recommend sort of doing it somewhat fluidly and not, again, getting yourself into a situation where you get super caught up in a lot of the detail. So I'm just gonna come around this little cowbell thing here and draw it out here. And this is not a blind contour drawing. In other words, I am looking down, sort of semi-observed, and I'm, Again, working with my non-dominant hand, so I, I'm, I'm losing a bit of control. You know, I'm not, I'm not able to really work in a way that, um, that I'm used to. I'm not able to like, rely on my quote-unquote skills as a drawer. And so that actually is liberating in a way, but definitely an edge for a lot of people. A lot of people would rather just be able to really control what they're doing. So here's a first pass with the charcoal. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this chamois cloth and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna wipe this down. Just really kind of obliterate it so it smudges out. And then I'm going to give it a quarter turn and I'm going to rearrange my objects a little bit. Just sort of scramble them. I'm not really paying too much attention to kind of formal compositional choices here. And then I'm gonna, again, using my non-dominant hand, I'm gonna come in and start to work. And you'll notice the lines that I obliterated with the chamois cloth are lighter now. They're almost um, like a memory of what came before. So again, I'm just kind of working, I I'm mostly looking at the kangaroo, I'm not so much caring about depiction here. I'm just really trying to get lines down and coming around. I like the curve of this rope here. I'm drawing right on top of what came before. And in doing so, I'm making new relationships that I wouldn't have necessarily had made if it was up to me. So working in a way that's really not up to you is a way to liberate the image. So I'm not needing to dictate what happens because in a lot of ways that dictation starts to kind of solidify our habitual way of working. So there's another pass and I'm gonna again I'm gonna come on and I'm gonna take it down with a chamois cloth just kind of not completely erasing it but obliterating it to an extent letting it go because letting go is a huge part of abstraction and looseness. 
I'm going to give this another quarter turn. I'm going to give these guys another little scramble. And I'm going to come in again. And I'm noticing how this page is starting to fill up. I could even start to work a little bit with the scale of my subject, enlarging it or reducing it depending on just sort of how I feel. But I'm really enjoying how some of these lines are mingling and layering and, and playing. It's like a dance, really. It's a dance you're doing with your non-dominant hand, letting go of all the things that you feel like you should be doing as an artist or ways to describe or demonstrating like you, that you know how to draw a certain way. I mean, that's, that's fine and good, but like you don't need to always be demonstrating your skill. I'm gonna turn it one more time. I'm gonna make, so all together, four turns, four times working. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw one more and remembering again that I, I wanna continue drawing with my non-dominant hand. It's really easy to revert back to the hand you're more comfortable with, but there's great liberation. Like I could feel it, you know, I can feel this liberation of not being able to do the things I normally do in the ways that I normally do them. And because of that, I'm getting these discoveries that I would definitely not be doing if I was trying to describe every little contour of this rope or drawing, you know, the way that this knot happens. So there's some really wonderful possibilities. So on this layer, I'm gonna keep the more robust line. And now I've got this incredible sort of dance happening with these lines. So what I could do at this point with an eraser is I could come in and I could start working reductively. I can start coming in and taking away, um, you know, just sort of instinctively where maybe I like some of these shapes. I can emphasize them with erasure. Uh, this is a white plastic eraser. And by doing that, but, but yet still keeping the record of what came before, there's depth that develops, and there's a dynamic of movement and a dynamic of abstraction that's very unique to this sort of drawing, and it's very liberated. So I encourage you to experiment with multiple layered drawings, wiping away, pulling back, and it can really be quite physical, and you can get your hands dirty, and that's okay. And also, this is really fun to do on the wall on a much larger scale if you'd like to try that. So this is a really fabulous way to work. And one other thing that you could do to further this piece is you could take some white gesso and a brush. And if there's areas that you just want to kind of get rid of, you can paint into those areas. Again, if you were going to do a lot of water-based media on here, I'd suggest taping down the edges and playing a little bit with, because what happens when you add water to paper, it starts to buckle up a little bit. But for the sake of the demonstration, I'm just gonna, so I'm starting to find some of these remnant shapes that were happening beneath here and starting to emphasize them by painting them in a little bit. And I like how the gesso is starting to pick up some of the charcoal. It's kind of a beautiful effect. So this four part drawing, rotating it, adding, subtracting, is a really beautiful um, thing to work on. And again, it could just go on and on and on. And then one last thing that you could do once you work with it is you can actually start to take apart the sections. And in taking apart the sections, you can lay them in in a different position and so I'm gonna just take these two sections <clears throat> and put them together again with itself. And here, so this also jostles all of the things that had just happened and it becomes a new conversation. So this new conversation is asking me something else. And so right now my instinct is I see the sweeping line you can start to kind of draw back in and start to transform it. So I definitely love taking things apart, 
putting them together again. And you could even redraw some of the objects again. And this is, can just be this ongoing dialogue of abstraction in a very physical and very beautiful way. So be brave, take things apart, put things back together, add, subtract, and you'll find that you'll really be able to create some very fluid, um, unexpected possibilities.